This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And I've got my teeny tiny root beer here with me to keep my blood sugar up while Sadie tells us about some murder. So I think we're in good shape. That's all you need. Tiny, tiny, (laughs) tiny root beers. (laughs) You want to take it, take it away? My root beer and I are dying to see what you got lined up for tonight. I'm ready. We are going to talk about the New Cross double murder. I don't, I don't know what any of those words mean, but I'm already kind of scared. Yeah, it's gnarly. Around 10 p.m. on June 29, 2008, the residents on Sterling Garden Street in the New Cross neighborhood of London heard and felt a loud, trembling series of noises. Ugh. One neighbor described it as, quote, a very strong sound. Another said, quote, I thought a bridge on the railway line had collapsed. Oh, and God. And someone else heard, quote, two or three loud bangs that sounded like a big fridge had fallen down. Uh Uh-uh. As people left their homes to see what had caused the noise, they saw flames shooting out of the living room windows of flat 12. Several neighbors ran over to see if there was anyone trapped inside. They banged on the door, but got no response. They even tried to throw water through the broken windows to put the fire out. The fire department arrived and managed to extinguish the fire quickly, but once inside, they found the bodies of two young men. Ugh. When police arrived to investigate the scene, they were horrified by what they found. The victims were dressed only in their underwear and had been bound and gagged. Their heads were wrapped in towels. Oh, no. They had been stabbed numerous times all over their face, head, and back. Ah. Uh-uh. Once the stabbing was over, the attacker then poured an accelerant over them, and they were lit on fire. Good God. The crime was so brutal, it would take a few extra days to identify them. Ugh. The victims were later identified as French exchange students, Laurent Bonomo and Gabrielle Frez. Laurent was renting the apartment, and Gabrielle lived about ten minutes down the road. Mm. An autopsy showed Laurent had been stabbed 196 times. I don't think that that's possible. I know. It's I've so never many. heard that many times before. Never. No. He was stabbed mostly in the face and neck, also in the back. Gabrielle was stabbed at least 47 times and then badly burned. Ugh. Some of the stab wounds were so vicious, they had managed to penetrate the skull and injure the men's brains. Oh my god. No, I know. Oh no. And did one of them die like did one of them get stabbed that many times first, you know what I mean? Right. Ugh. Police believed they were tortured for some time before dying from their injuries. Well there's my answer. Both Laurent and Gabrielle were 23 years old and working towards their master's degree in biochemistry at Polytech Claremont Ferrand University in France. What the heck, man? They were in London on a three-month DNA research project exchange program at the Imperial College. Why would anybody ever want to hurt them? Laurent was from Valou, which is a town in southern France. He was described as immensely personable and popular. His cousin said, quote, he was a fantastic, fun-loving, exuberant guy. His fiancée, Mary, who he last spoke to just hours before his murder, said that he gave her, quote, 10 months of a happiness I never experienced until then, and added that she would, quote, never stop thinking about him. Ugh. They had been due to Mary soon after returning from London. I hate it. Ugh, me too. Gabrielle Ferez was from Prezul, near Amens in northern France. He was a world traveler, a history buff, and worked during his holidays at Amon's Hospital. His father, Oliver, said, quote, Gabrielle is, was the most intelligent, affectionate, wonderful son anyone could ever want. He had such a bright future, and now that is gone. Mm-mm. By all accounts, the two were dearly loved and had no enemies. There was nothing in their past or present to offer clues as to why or who had d- done this to them. 
As detectives pieced together the timeline of events, they learned the friends had been playing video games together the night they were attacked. One neighbor said they saw two men hammering on the window of a flat just before the fire broke out. Another saw a white man running from the flat that same night. Both the students' cell phones, credit cards, and a pair of PSP handheld video game consoles were missing. There was no sign of forced entry. To get inside the flat, someone would have to first ring the buzzer to be let into the main entrance before entering into the apartment. Authorities learned that six days before the murders, a laptop had been stolen from Lorenz. He had come out of the shower at about 6 a.m. to find an intruder hurriedly leaving with his computer. Hmm. He found his living room window open and called the police who dusted for fingerprints. Police believed robbery was the motive for the murders and that it was likely the men were tortured in order to reveal their PIN numbers for their credit cards. On July 6th, authorities released a composite sketch of a man seen fleeing the area. He was described as, quote, white, 30 to 40 years of age, slight or slim build, and wearing a light-colored baseball cap. They begged the public to come forward with tips that might lead to an arrest. A week passed, and then a man, whose face and hands were covered in third-degree burns, walked into the Lewisham police station. When he tried to talk to the receptionist, she told him to wait in line. Frustrated, he yelled, quote, I just killed two people and the police don't fucking want to do anything about it. Ugh. He was then quickly escorted to an interview room. 34-year-old Nigel Farmer told police that he and his friend, 23-year-old Daniel Dano Mad Dog Sonics, mm-hmm. yep. had gone. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, I just kept finding more and more nicknames for this asshole. Here we go. Had gone to Lorenz flat after a night of drinking and doing drugs. Farmer was unemployed and without a permanent address at the time of his arrest. He was known for having a, quote, ferocious temper after drinking, especially towards the women in his family. When police spoke to Farmer's mom, she said, quote, when drunk, Nigel could get very angry. He could behave violently and lose control, lose the plot. He has a terrible temper. Mm-hmm. She also said that Farmer was so, quote, suicidally depressed. He would do something bad to somebody unless he got help. Mm-hmm. He had been abusive to his ex-girlfriend and mother to his children, often hitting her and destroying their home in fits of rage. Good grief. In June of 1996, Farmer was convicted on a robbery charge when he and his friend robbed a stranger at knife point. While his friend rifled through the victim's pockets, Farmer took his wallet and demanded his PIN number for his bank card. After the two men fled, the victim was able to identify them to the police and they were arrested. Farmer served three years for this crime. Wow. The year before the murders, Farmer had been hospitalized on more than one occasion for attempting suicide and had been evaluated for his risk of causing violence and harm to others, which was assessed at low to moderate. Hmm. Doctors believed if he was able to get his drug use under control, he'd feel much better and be less violent towards himself and others. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just kind of... <laughs> Well, thank you for that very astute <laughs> observation, <laughs> Doctor. You yes. deserve a raise. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, and then meanwhile, this guy, uh, I think he stays in the hospital for like four days and decides the treatment isn't working mm-hmm. and leaves and doesn't like try to get more mental health help or go to rehab or. Yeah, of course he doesn't. To take care of any of his terrible problems. Yeah, because drugs are way easier. It's way easier to do Mm -hmm. drugs than it is to actually address your problems. Yep. It was around this time that Farmer met Dano Sonics. People close to Farmer said despite being bullied and abused as a whipping boy by the Sonics family, who were known for their extreme violence and criminal activity, he was in awe of them. He was clearly out of his league among the more serious criminals, but Farmer wanted to be just like them. Mm-hmm. He hoped to prove himself to the Sonics family by becoming as violent as they were and claimed to have witnessed multiple beatings by Dano's father, Bernie, in pubs in New Cross. How old are these kids? So, uh, Farmer is 34 and Sonics was 23. Whoa. Yeah. It even came out later that Farmer called Bernie at 6.30 a.m. on the day of the killings. During the call, Farmer was, quote, screaming, ranting, and raving. He was inside Lorenz's flat, and Bernie could hear the victim struggling in the background. As Farmer started talking, he shouted, quote, Shut your fucking mouth or I'll cut your hand off. Ugh. When questioned by police, Farmer claimed Sonix had been the one to break into Lorenz previously and had managed to steal his computer while Laurent was showering. 
Did he know these guys? I mean, I know we're maybe not there yet, but did he know them or was this random? Totally random. Oh, no. Yeah. Sonnex thought there might be more things to steal from the flat, so they decided to go back. Ugh. Farmer said he hadn't killed the men. Sonnex had been the one to do that. Authorities couldn't get much more out of Farmer early on, but were able to get enough to charge him with murder. He was then sent to the hospital to have his burns treated. Mm. Lee started a massive manhunt for Sonnex after finding CCTV footage of him close to the crime scene. He was eventually found hiding in the loft of his grandparents' home in Peckham, South London. When arrested, he said, quote, what fucking murders? And on the way to the police station, he, quote, laughed long and loudly. Seems like he's a very stable individual. Yeah. Sonix grew up in a notorious crime family. His father, brother, and sister had served a total of 17 prison sentences. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much prison sentences. So many. In 2003, at age 17, Sonix was put in prison for eight years for a string of crimes, including armed robbery and an attack on a rival of his who was only 16. Mm. Sonic stabbed the teen three times in the back and chest in a fight over a car in May of 2002. Not good. Not a good sign. Nope. After being categorized as medium risk, Sonix was released from jail on February 8th, 2008. So what is that? Five years? Three, four, five. Yeah. After serving five years. Mm Mm-hmm. And his supervision was left to a newly qualified probation officer who was struggling with a caseload of 127 offenders. Oh in a, my God. <laughs> no. In an understaffed Lewisham probation office where nobody had more than two years' experience. Ugh. Isn't that the case, though? I mean, mm-hmm. when Sadie and I worked at the group home in college, I was 20 years old and I was managing a group home with kids age. Uh, I think the youngest was like 12 to 18. Mm -hmm. So there are kids that were two years younger than me, and I was in charge of them and a staff of like eight. And I was making, when I started, I was making $6 an hour. And as a manager, I was making a whopping $10 an hour. Yep. And I had, what were my qualifications? Literally nothing. (laughs) Right. And these are probation officers. Yeah. Like, I don't know what their, what the qualifications are to be a probation officer in London, but... Like, nobody's going to stick around in that awful job. No. That you no. have to work your ass off and deal with these guys. And, it's yeah, impossible. It's never going to happen. No. no. Two days after being released from prison, Sonics tricked his way into a London flat and took a pregnant woman captive before ordering her to call her boyfriend to come over. They just cannot help themselves. No. Two days. God. When he arrived, he found his girlfriend, This the guy, the, mm-hmm. the boyfriend... Uh, He found his girlfriend bound at the wrist and ankles and being held at knife point. The man was also bound and had a pillowcase placed over his head before Sonics threatened them with a saw and a hammer and demanded money. After he left, the couple called police, but for unknown reasons, charges were not pursued and Sonics was never arrested. What? He was then arrested a month later after being caught with stolen items, but he was granted bail and released from jail. It took 33 days for a warrant to be issued to send him back to prison, and even then, the police failed to go and look for him until after he became a suspect in the murders of Laurent and Gabrielle. You're kidding me. Nope. He's already attempted to murder. Oh, my God. I know. I know. <sighs> Love these stories. These are the best well, I, stories. Good thing there's millions of them. I know. <laughs> it's just run like... run out of these stories to tell. It's basically I'm, every story. I know. I really am surprised. Surprised. I shouldn't be, but I'm surprised how often this comes up. Right? You know? I am I know it is pretty surprising, but maybe if we stopped focusing so much on nonviolent criminals and putting right. people in prison and into the system that don't belong there, uh we a little easier for everyone to do their jobs. Mm-hmm. And focus on actually violent criminals. Right. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> be a good place to start. Yeah. Sonics's dad, Bernie, had 26 convictions against him for 47 crimes, including gun and drug offenses, and he had served six prison sentences. Um, that's so many. That's so many. I know. His brother has 21 convictions for 34 offenses and has served 10 prison sentences. Ah, uh, how? I just don't understand how. <laughs> I know. 
like 10. How do you like go to jail 10 times and, and I don't keep rem- getting out? I think the article I read said the brother's age and he was like 34 years old. He, you know, like it doesn't too, make mathematical many, sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. I assume it's like, you know, six months here, a year there, two years here. But you still, know, like, yeah. 10. 10. His sister was jailed for five years for causing grievous bodily harm after she repeatedly hit another woman with a golf club. During his interview with police, Sonics claimed he only acted as a lookout for the burglary at Laurent's flat. Mm-hmm. And that farmer handed him the bank cards from the window, which he then brought to the cash machine. Yep, I believe him. I believe him. Yeah, I mean, he's not a bad guy. He would not stab somebody. No. Definitely didn't already go to prison for stabbing somebody. <laughs> no. He said the farmer was the one that killed Laurent and Gabrielle. However, police found Sonic's palm print inside the flat and knew this was a lie. I'm just shocked out of I my know. pants. Right. Sonics was charged with two counts of murder, arson, kidnapping, and attempting to pervert the course of justice. God. The trial for Daniel Sonics and Nigel Farmer began on April 24th, 2009. Jurors were told to, quote, brace themselves as they learned of the unimaginable horror of the killings. Mm. The prosecutors described the crime as a, quote, orgy of bloodletting and said despite the sadistic ferocity of the attack that might suggest the killers were psychopaths, there was no evidence that Farmer or Sonics had suffered from mental illness. Uh-huh. Prosecutor Crispin Eilet said of the victims, quote, these two bright, talented, and engaging young men had brilliant futures ahead of them. They were dearly loved by their friends and family. Neither of them had an enemy in the world. In what circumstances could they have met such terrible deaths? They must have thought that all they had to do was cooperate while the burglars helped themselves to whatever they wanted, and it would soon all be over. He continues, Whatever the burglars may have had in their mind, the young men could not, for a moment, have anticipated that they would have then be subjected to such an attack. Otherwise, you may think that they would have fought for their lives. I, yeah, God, yeah. I don't like home invasion. <laughs> no. And I can it, tell you right now my instinct would absolutely be to comply i think about it a lot because i have kind of a funny house where like it's a two-story and the main floor is the second story so you have to Mm -hmm. like i would be able to see people coming up the stairs and i think about a lot how quickly i could get down the back stairs and out you know like right i think i would fly but if i didn't have that opportunity i would definitely comply right yeah. Yep. No, Ryan's always like, no, you'd like stab them. You'd fight. And I'm, I'm just, I, it's not me. No, I'm not prepared for that. I think no. I probably should be better prepared. Laura has a humongous giant pipe by the bed, but I'm, yeah, I'm not prepared to, I don't even think I'm like mentally prepared to no, do it. No, well, that's alone, what I mean. Like, like no, like just... tactically prepared to do yeah. it. I mean, if somebody tried to go after my kids, I think I'd fight, but yeah, otherwise, it's just me. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, I guess just do. I mean, I don't know. I hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. Ugh. It's so awful. It's so awful. So, the we're still here with the prosecutor quote. Yep. It's so, a quote It may be that egging one another on, possibly intoxicated by a cocktail of drink and drugs, they simply got carried away. Whatever the reason for it, they subjected their victims to over two hours of hideous terror and suffering. Mm hmm. And for what? 360 pounds, a couple of telephones, and two PlayStation games. Enough to keep them in drugs for a few days. It's just... <sighs> yep. It's believed that Sonix and Farmer entered the flat through an open window when Laurent and Gabrielle were sleeping. They bound and gagged the men, and after torturing them for more than two hours to get their PIN numbers, Sonix went to a cash machine to withdraw money while Farmer ransacked the flat. Mm. When one of the cards failed at the cash machine, the attackers, quote, took revenge in a joint attack. It's believed that Sonix was the one that started the stabbing, and then after he was exhausted, he handed the knife to Farmer, who finished the job. I I feel like the job was probably well finished at that point, guys. You know? Yes. What the fuck? Farmer was later quoted as saying, Laurent, quote, just wouldn't die. So they had to keep stabbing him. Mm -mm. 
but it's believed that many of the wounds inflicted on Laurent happened after his death. I, I, it's just, again, mathematically impossible that he would yeah. still be alive after that. He much. was stabbed over like 200 times. They said yeah. about half of those were done after his, he was already dead. It's like, uh, what sick fuckers. I just can't even. Fucks. No. <laughs> after Sonics and Farmer fled the apartment, Farmer realized that they left evidence behind. So he returned and set the flat on fire, suffering bad burns in the process. Mm-hmm. The jury found both Dan O'Sonics and Nigel Farmer guilty of two counts of murder. During sentencing, the judge said, quote, I am satisfied that the only reason for the number of stab wounds is that the killings were sadistic. The killers got pleasure from what they were doing. A hundred percent. Yep. He then sentenced Sonics to a minimum of 40 years. Farmer was sentenced to a minimum of 35 years. Uh, that UK judicial system, man, it never ceases to give no. me a fucking... <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 what? And you will get 11 minutes. I mean, that is why yeah. they each had like 10 sentences, because sentencing right. is so Thank minimal. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, The judge said that the pair had only escaped being jailed without a chance of parole because of their young age. He told the killers, quote, The misery and suffering that you have caused cannot be measured. These are the worst crimes I have ever had to deal with, and unhappily, no punishment that I can pass can ever bring any real comfort to the families. Only you two know exactly what happened, why it happened, and which of you bears the greater blame. I mean, they were adult people. They weren't 15. Right. Well, that's what I... I mean, yeah, Sonics was 23, but still. Had already spent eight years in prison. Eight eight years. He got eight years for stabbing the other guy. That's what I mean. Right. And there's no... I mean, they're not rehabilitatable. So it's not like, well, we'll give him 40 years. He'll be out when he's 70-something. And he'll probably be a good guy. No, just leave him in there. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I uh, am somebody who believes in rehabilitation, as you all know, and somebody who doesn't really believe in the way we punish people. But in some cases, I think it's appropriate. In this case, I think it's very appropriate. Yep. Don't yeah. parole them. What if he gets paroled after like 10 years? Oh, God. Yeah. Well, it's a minimum of 35. So he has to do at least or okay. 40. So okay. next has to do 40 years before he's eligible for parole. But we all know how that goes. That's real slippery, too, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh. No. Yep. Nope. As Sonics left the courtroom, he winked at his father, who was sitting in the public gallery, and pretended. Oh, sorry. No. no, man, I hear you. And pretended to whistle as he swaggered from the room. That guy is bad. That's He's bad. So bad. He's so bad. Yeah, I was reading an article um, that in 2012, I think it was, he uh, attacked a guard and held a. Uh, like butter it sounded like a butter knife to his throat yeah. in prison and was like trying to it sounds i don't know i don't i don't know enough but it sounds like he's kind of acting crazy uh-huh he was all like talking nonsense and saying trying that people were after him and game the system mm-hmm. yeah of course he was because he yep. comes from a family of criminals and so they all told him exactly what he needs to do to try to have mm-hmm. the lightest sentence and blah blah yep. blah yep yep after sentencing, Guy Bonomo, Laurent's father, said, quote, We have not seen the trial of two human beings. They are animals. We were hoping for a more severe sentence. They should never be let out. Francois Villamont, the mother of Gabrielle Ferez, said, quote, Nothing will remove the suffering, and I can never accept the torture that was inflicted on Gabrielle gratuitously. The victim's parents said they were going to sue the British authorities over a failure to prevent Sonix from carrying out his brutal attacks. Oliver Ferez, Gabrielle's father, said an apology, quote, will not suffice. Lorenz's father said the two students, quote, would be alive today if the British justice system had not failed us. Mm-hmm. Their hope is to keep this from happening to another family in the future. I, and that's just, ugh, that's what I, <sighs> They need it to be done. They need it to be closed up for good. That's, yep. you know, they need that to know that these people who did this to their family, are, it's just done. They're right. never coming out. They don't have to think about them ever again. They don't have to worry about them ever again. It's done. And they can't. They can't even have that peace, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, there was a lot of the newspaper articles that I read about how the... French were really angry yeah, at the British, and they were saying if it was reversed, and it was one of the 
it was like a exchange student from London in their town in France that this had happened. It would have been like this much bigger deal. And, you know, so there was a lot of hurt feelings and anger. Yeah, I and I, mean, I don't blame anybody. I would be, I'd feel the exact same way. No, I'd be. F- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. It's awful. <sighs> yeah. So and that's it. That's the. Fuck. No. God. Cross double murder. Those poor boys, their no. poor families. That sucks. That yep. sucks. Yeah. And, you know, as much as I'm like, fuck those guys, put them away forever, I can't imagine what they grew up going through to have that much rage. Right. You know? Yep. Horrible things happen Horrible. to those two. Horrible. Well, in Sonics in particular, I mean, you grow, grow up in a family just full of violence yeah and criminal activity Activity, drugs and everything yeah i mean he said that when he was little he remembers the police raiding his home and oh i'm sure you know but yeah i just yeah once your father has been to prison that many times and the system is that well aware of their behavior how are they still your parent Mm -hmm. you know how are you not permanently protected from that person it's so beyond When you have me. 127 people in your caseload. You know, like, right, exactly. If that's the, what yeah. the probation officers are going through, what else is happening at that, at that time exactly. in London. <laughs> no, and I don't know enough about the system there, you know, to know anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? It's like, yes, yeah, I do. is this yeah. specifically I mean, to this neighborhood States. or, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Yep, what's going on in London? Tell us, yeah. you guys. Well, I know there's some really, really destitute parts of London. I mean, just like any city, especially mm-hmm. a city that size. But yeah, I'm I. I'd be so curious, like if we are able to decriminalize marijuana, for example, which seems very likely in our lifetime, making that adjustment to the system in general. You know, like how much of a change would something like that make? Mm-hmm. to like how much resources would it free up right how many fewer people would be in prison how many fewer people would be traumatized as a result of having a parent in prison you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. i'm sure some bad will come of it but like what people get a little lazier and more chilled out you know like, right <laughs> <laughs> it's addiction of course but well, that's going to happen like, regardless if yeah. it's decriminalized then it needs to be decriminalized so that people can get have, care uh, yeah yeah like yeah they need to be tr- helped they don't need to be punished no fuck man what do you think about it tiny root beer yeah i, I don't it. like it <laughs> i don't either buddy i really yeah. don't well good job man that is i don't like home invasions no Mm-mm. The Strangers is my top scary movie because it is the scariest movie I've ever seen. And yep. it is scary. <laughs> yes. I'm actually surprised I was able to I kinda watch am that one. It's so bad. I've watched it about 65 times. Ooh, he has a new movie out, The Ooh. Dark and the Wicked. Holy <laughs> shit, man. That movie is vicious and great. Is it? Oh, boy. It is so scary. Although Laura started texting me pictures of shoes she wanted for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> like two-thirds. she wasn't watching it with you because she hates scary oh god movies, no. Right? no no okay. no and that movie so she is... didn't know okay well she did but then she was just texting me and then was like hey am i ruining your movie and i was like yeah and it was right at kind of a pivotal part and rather than pause it i thought you know we'd have like a quick conversation about a shoe and move on but it went on for too long <laughs> so i need to rewatch it because there was sort of a chunk a missed. really scary chunk that I missed, but I was still so, so sufficiently scared and creeped out and disturbed by that movie. So anyway, uh, it's really good. And Home Invasion is really bad. Yes. But yep. you did a good job on that story. Well, thank you. You're I welcome. I appreciate it. I'm so yeah. sorry for their families. Deeply. I don't like it. No. Worst case scenario. Fucking... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Study abroad. You send your kid abroad. 
mm-hmm. and exchange, that, exchange, exchange. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. happens. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And then you're in a you have to deal with a judicial system in a foreign country. On and on. No. No. Awful. And it's random and it's vicious. Mm-mm. 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 No. no. Hate it. <sighs> so much. Yep. I know. I finished it earlier and I was like, all right, well, this is a huge sad uh, sadness. <laughs> so <laughs> not that any of them are like happy, but. You know. No, but my next case is kind of a wacky one. So mm-hmm. it'll offset it next week. We'll, we'll do a little wacky infusion. I mean, it's right. still really sad, but it's fucking weird, man. It is wackadoodle. Good. Yep. I need a little more wackadoodle in my life. I know. After Carol Jenkins, I was like, I need something just not extremely yeah. so crushingly sad. Because. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. So. Hey. Um, happy New Year, you guys. Happy New Year. This comes out on Wednesday, right? And then tomorrow New Year's is Happy on New Year. Friday? According to you guys, Thursday. No, that's New Year's Eve. Oh, right? well, that's the real party. <laughs> None of us are partying this year at all. I was I like, I was telling Courtney earlier that I went, I saw my parents and they offered to take our boys for New Year's Eve. And my dad was like, what are you going to, what are you guys doing? What are your plans? And I was like, oh, we're going to go to a very big party. It'll be really fun. Mm -hmm. And they both got really quiet and they're like, oh, okay. (laughs) Sadie, who's been like the number one COVID policeman (laughs) of all of the people on the earth. Like there's nobody more Uh, cautious and careful than Sadie, period. Yeah. But (laughs) my dad, he's like, wait, where are you going? And I was like, I'm going to a great big party, dad. And he was like, oh. And I was like, where do you think I, like, I'm not going anywhere. No. I'm going to <laughs> attempt to stay awake for a full movie. Oh my That's my no, big like, plan. I'm going to go to bed at 8.30 p.m. and sleep through the night. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I look forward to having parties again in the future, but. Shit, yeah. Yes. Right now is not the time that I'm going to go party. No. We can all <laughs> hunker down for one more big event and then do it later. Yep. <laughs> It's yep. going to be okay. We could do it later. Yep. In the meantime, do you want some names? Yes. Kelly Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Kelly. K-E-L-L-Y. K-E-L-L-E-Y. Kelly Kelly. Fuck was. Up. Why not? Do we know the story behind it? Just that somebody got named Kelly Kelly. I don't remember. That that email came through. It's been a while since, because we missed you guys last week. Cause mm-hmm. We took a week off, but Kelly Kelly. Um, tears of joy. <laughs> so, good. so, so good. And this, I mean, God, you guys just keep b- raising the bar, but Dick Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I love the word jostle. I think you said earlier that you're jostling your hair. Is that the word you use? <laughs> jostling? I love that word. Probably. But to have your name. <laughs> Dick. Jocelyn. Jocelyn. We never told them about who we went to high school with. Rodney. Oh. Rodney Cox. Rodney which Cox. abbreviates to Rod <laughs> Cox. <laughs> I also went to high school with a high school with a lovely human. Her name was Amanda Love. <laughs> I think you mentioned that one to the Have people. I? Oh, yes. I'm going to mention it again. Yeah. I don't Amanda know if you listen to Amanda. I love you. So does the so does she love men anyway? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard reverse joke to make. Um, so cute, you guys! Please don't ever stop. Please, please. don't ever stop. If you know cute names. Yeah. <sighs> Speaking of cute names, we got a couple what? shout outs. Yeah. Who do we have? Oh, and did we, I don't know if I mentioned, you can now sign up for a whole entire year yes. of Patreon. Do it. It's only like 30 bucks, man. It's nothing. Well, I mean, it can be 30 bucks. It can be more bucks, depending mm-hmm. on how many bucks you choose to give us. How much you do get, I think it's a want. 10% discount, 10 That's or 15%. I don't remember, but head on over, check it out. Do it sign up there's like almost 30 episodes over there now right i mean which i cannot believe anyway i can't either but it's the winter time perfect time to binge our bullshit that's right instead of going to a giant new year's eve party Mm -hmm. sit down plug us in 
take a mm-hmm. listen. Yep. Who, who do we have this week? Uh, this week, I would like to say thank you very, very much to Jenny B. Jenny B. from Jenny from the Block. It's Jennifer. <laughs> oh, my God. Lopez. <gasps> oh, my God. Undercover. Yours. I appreciate yeah. your support, Jennifer Lopez. Yep. And thank you so much to Man Like Fred. Man Like Fred? Yep. Yeah. I want. I, great. <laughs> I love it. I just do. <laughs> I do too. Oh, uh, big other. Uh, oh, I, I just noticed that we have two gens. Thank you so much to Jennifer G. It's probably also Jennifer Lopez. She just doubled her support and felt self conscious, so pretended. Yes. Yes. Well, and Jennifer G is our first official yearly subscriber. So oh, I know is. who that is. Yes, that is definitely Jennifer Lopez. Also. Yes. A dear listener that we love very much who yep. we, yes, thank you, Jennifer Lopez. I really, I know who you really are, though. Like, that's right. Oh. <laughs> uh, and that's it for this week. Yeah. We appreciate your support and keep it up. Definitely keep it up. Please. And keep it cool and keep it kind and keep it every time. <laughs> as I that's always our say. new motto. <laughs> been working hard what else anything else going on um Ooh, I, hey tell me one thing you are most i had a way to say this now i don't remember thought we could do like a new year's wrap up should be something we're grateful for what the best thing that happened in 2020 right <laughs> well i follow a comedian on instagram her name is meg stalter and she's so funny so funny. And she wrote a letter that, to herself about all the reasons she loves herself. And mm. it's such a beautiful, lovely thing to do. So I did it. And I feel very vulnerable about reading it. But I think I'll read it because I want other people to, to do it too. Because it's really a lovely thing to do for yourself. Holy shit, Courtney. That's amazing. Do you want me to read it? Yes. All right, guys. I love how much you root for people and how deeply you hate bullies and will stand up for their victims. I love how hard you work to crack up yourself and others. I love how you work so hard but try to have fun as many seconds of every day as humanly possible. I love how hard you look forward to things, how grateful you are, how much you love life. I love how deep you can be, but how much you simultaneously love pop culture and garbage food. (laughs) I love that you basically love everything but bullies and bully behavior. (laughs) I love how deeply you try to understand everything, every single thing that comes your way. I love how much you hate small talk and how hard you work to try to try to charm people into talking about things that matter. I love how hard you pay attention and try to make sure people feel seen. I love your obsession with how your dog smells. (laughs) (laughs) I love how you take more chances as you get older instead of less. I love how you're learning to embrace joy and care less about being perceived as cool. I love how often you give compliments. I love that you keep trying for casual New York chic style, even though it makes you look old and like you're in a cult. (laughs) (laughs) I love how much you're learning about yourself and the world around you and how you allow for nuance and humanity instead of shutting it all down. I love that you're also allowing for other people to feel their pain and learning to set boundaries when the expression of that pain hurts. I love that you're trying to ask more questions. I love that you took the time to write this. Oh. So there you go, guys. Do it. I love that. I think you should do it, too, and read it next time if you feel up for it. Uh, It really, really, like, was so fun to write. I was so surprised at how much fun it was to write. Yes. No, I love that. That's so funny. I know. so true. I know. It just becomes like somebody else. And you're like, God, that person's awesome. (laughs) Yes. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So do it guys. And I want to, and if you want us to read them, send them to us or just post them and tag us. But I think this is a year that we need gratitude and we need love and we need desperately need to love ourselves and each other mm -hmm. more. And I hope that we can take that into 2021 because 2020 is the year that we ripped ourselves wide open to learn how to do that. And I hope that 2021 is the year that we can put that into practice. So I decided to start with that. I love it. Great. Yeah. (sighs) That's what I say. This year was all about like 
just stripping it all away. Oh my God. Figuring out what was deep, deep inside. And yep. it really started And this sounds a little corny, but it really started for me with the podcast. Yep. It's been very transformative. Like being, being willing to be vulnerable and put myself out there, put us out there. Um, is not something that is in my wheelhouse of comfort. No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, and it made me push and then COVID and therapy. And yep. I feel like it, when I think about Sadie on January 1st of 2020 mm-hmm. to now, I'm literally a different fucking person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's yeah. been the fucking hardest and in some ways... Um, I don't want to say the best. I can't say it's most the best important, year, but like, maybe yes, most one important. of the most important years of my life for sure. I would, comp- yeah. I would totally agree with that. I don't feel like the same person and I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. So what has changed for you, dear listeners? Yeah. This year? Yeah. I, I mean, write love letters to yourself. I really, I'm going to try to do it. It's so much it's really easier important. than you'd think. Yeah. I was like, I used to hate that stuff when you go to camp and they're like, write a letter back to yourself. And I was like, yeah. but I don't, I think maybe when it's coming from someone like Meg Stalter, who's just like so irreverent and so fucking over the top and funny. And, you know, I, I've seen this in all with a lot of comedians that I love and maybe it's kind of more of a millennial thing, but this sort of joyful self love and mm-hmm. acceptance is like mm-hmm. very infectious and I'm all for it. And yep. so coming from her, it just somehow made it more palatable. And so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. So I did. Good. Good. Yep. I love it. So, yeah, tell us why you love yourself. And we will tell you right back because you're hot. It's only you're because hot, you're attractive, you're physically attractive. I don't care about your insides. <laughs> I just see you guys on Instagram and I know that you are physically attractive. And that's the <laughs> only reason I care about you. Let's be clear. <laughs> Hotness. Hot. <laughs> So there you go. Everybody just stay hot into 2021 and I will be still all love you. I will still love you. <laughs> if you can't be hot, you're on your own. You don't deserve love. <laughs> God. Oh, people are crying. No, you guys she's, are amazing. She's, joke, she's joking. In case you're worried, she's just joking. No, she's not. <laughs> that was a tiny root beer. You don't know me. Shut up. We just met. Get in my belly. Oh. <laughs> Uh, oh we love you we really do love you guys and you're an yep. incredible group of humans and i'm so grateful yep. for you and i know sadie is too so much okay mm. oh social media which i fucking hate so much you guys i'm so sorry it exists it's just on my last nerve right now mm-hmm. uh our instagram with you guys is the only thing i like in this world hey well maybe we should just get rid of our facebook <laughs> oh well i don't even care don't about anything. facebook it's just i feel like things have started infiltrating Instagram that didn't used to it used to just be like this easier Easy place. And, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, that's shifted. And so yeah. not for us necessarily, but for other people. Anyway, um, it's just social media in general. It's such right. a problem. We need to get a handle on it. And in the meantime, go find us there. <laughs> <laughs> now that we gave ourselves such a glowing recommendation. Well, I really do like our Instagram. It yes. just I think the thing that I just worry about our Instagram changing into something I don't like and that's what bumps me up. So mm-hmm. in the meantime, I'm going to appreciate it and enjoy it. And it is at they will kill also on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, our... we have over 600 followers on Twitter. I just need to tell you that. Holy Jesus. What? Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Good job. That is amazing. Good yeah. job. I don't even do anything about it anymore. It just happens. <laughs> So it's nice. the mystery of Twitter. <laughs> Nobody gets it. It just just does. Just happens. Well, thank you to those of you who are there and have been tweeting us lately, which is really fun, because then I get to just screen cap, cap the tweet and look like a cool influencer. That's right. Which is my life's goal. <laughs> just kidding. I just <laughs> not for one second. Don't Anyways, um, <laughs> I hate social media, but I desperately want to be an influencer. <laughs> um... <laughs> Also, our website is theywillkill.com, and you can email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Yep. I had a friend of mine who tried to email us, and then later was like, hey, did you get my email? And I said no, and realized that she forgot the podcast part. Every time. 
So um, just don't forget that part. Yep. If you want to email us. Yep. yep. That's, the moral, that's the moral of that story. Yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> riveting story. Uh, thank you, AJ Bergans, for our music. Yeah, thank you. You are amazing. And please rate, review, subscribe. Yes, please. Very please. much, please. We have, I've noticed, we can find the international reviews, like, outside of the U.S. on a certain website, and I notice them, and we appreciate it so much. Oh, Germany. Yes. Um, Canada. Canada. The U.K. Um, U.K. Australia. Yeah, man. So we see you, we hear you, and thank you. Big, 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 big your times. That's and it. That's it. I will and do remember, an and remember. I feel like the uh, whole big, this whole thing was an and remember, right? And Just, remember that... It's the new year. It's so the new year, and get your vaccine. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I know. Jam it I in do my it. arm. <laughs> uh, we love you guys. We love you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.